Lately, I've been hearing from people who thought they found an alternative way to book a Disney World vacation, but ultimately wished they followed the regular procedure. Here's what they're doing and why some people are not happy. It's coming up right now on My name is Darren from OrlandoParksGuy.com, and after hearing about people's experiences with renting Disney Vacation Club points, I decided to pull together their issues and share them with you. While renting DVC points may seem like a great way to save money on a deluxe resort, there are some things you need to consider before you book, and they are significant. Disney Vacation Club is Disney's version of a timeshare program, but rather than buying a set week as with companies like RCI and Hilton Grand Vacations, Disney Vacation Club members get an annual allotment of points. These points can be redeemed at a variety of Disney resorts. Most of them, however, are located at Disney World in Florida. Points are based on things like the resort you choose, the room category, and date. Nightly point rates cost more during the holidays and spring break than say summertime, which is value season. One of my viewers pointed out that she was looking to rent points for a one bedroom villa at Bay Lake Tower at Walt Disney World for a few nights in late December. The room cost 56 points per night, but when she looked into traveling in July, the same room cost only 28 points per night. So she was able to rent fewer points, which saved her money. If Disney Vacation Club members decide they do not want to use their points, they can rent them out to someone else either through a broker or they may use a Facebook group that relies heavily on the honor system. The claim is that renting points can save you a lot of money, overpaying cash for the room, and allow you to book a room category that would likely be available only to Disney Vacation Club members, like a one, two, or three bedroom villa at a Disney World Deluxe Resort. And while I can confirm there are savings, they are not usually as high as some people say. In the research that I've done, it looks to be more like a savings of about 30 to 35%, but Disney almost always has 35% discounts on deluxe hotel rooms anyway. Now, I've noticed that three bedroom villas are often excluded from those hotel discounts, but three bedroom villas are very expensive no matter how you book them, and they're also very difficult to get because there's so few of them. First, I don't recommend booking through Facebook groups, etc. I know that many people have had only great experiences and most people are honest, but it's when things go wrong that positive relationships can go downhill rather quickly and you'll probably end up on the people's court. Both parties are entrusting each other, who are strangers by the way, with thousands of dollars at play. And as a fan of the people's court myself, I'll borrow a quote from the judge, the cheap ends up expensive. Brokers are the way to go when it comes to renting points. Just do a Google search and you'll see a whole bunch that comes up. But the process requires money up front with some uncertainties. With most, you'll be required to give a deposit up front to initiate a search. You'll provide your dates, hotel, and room choice and know how many points you'll need. Once the deposit is made, the broker will then try to find someone who matches your parameters and negotiate a price. Hopefully they can match you with someone who has points based out of that resort, known as a home resort. In short, a home resort allows you to book at that specific resort 11 months out, which is a significant head start over other Disney Vacation Club members who have different home resorts. More on this coming up in a bit. If a match is found and the price is acceptable, the broker has them create a reservation for you through Disney. The broker will then pass that information on to you. You then have a set period of about 24 hours to pay the broker in full for the cost of the rented points. On the other hand, when you book a traditional Disney vacation package, you only need to pay the refundable $200 deposit and the final payment isn't due until 30 days prior to your check-in date. So this is a big downside to renting points. Disney makes it very easy for you to make modifications, cancel, and even make payments. So when you rent points, you're agreeing to give up these perks. Mike wrote to me and pointed out that he had to purchase his Disney theme park tickets on his own after renting his points. He says, I didn't realize that I had to pay for my tickets in full and they were non-refundable. He went on to say, this is a major drawback compared to booking a package with my travel agent. Mike is 100% right. Tickets purchased outside of a package are non-refundable, but Disney will allow him to change his ticket dates. But it's yet another thing that you must pay for in full upfront. 
So between the full payment for the points and the full payment on the tickets, you can easily have several thousand dollars out. Remember, when you book a Disney World package, you only pay the $200 refundable deposit. The final balance isn't due until 30 days prior to check-in. One of the biggest drawbacks of renting points is that modifying your dates or changing your party mix is a complicated endeavor. If you find a significantly cheaper flight that comes in two days before you were planning, well, changing your DVC dates isn't going to be easy and may even be impossible. So you may be stuck paying the higher airfare if you can't change your DVC dates. This one seems obvious, but you have to ensure that the member's account is in good standing. If they forget to pay their annual dues, Disney may suspend their member benefits, including the ability to make or keep reservations. Also, many DVC members who are renting points are also open to selling their membership. Maybe they're just done with it. They're sick of Disney, the kids prefer Universal, or want to go on a cruise or whatever. Members may sell their membership on a DVC resale market. Now, the new owners will see that they are buying points that have been rented. Hopefully, the new owners will honor your points, but they could cancel your reservation if they want your points for their own vacation. Remember that the member owns your reservation, you're just renting. I heard from a woman who rented points for a studio at Animal Kingdom Lodge. After some consideration, she decided she wanted to buy the Disney dining plan. But to add the dining plan, she had to ask the broker to ask the owner to add it to the reservation. The owner needed her credit card to make the purchase. This made her feel uncomfortable. Travel insurance is something you need to consider when renting points, but you'll need to do this on your own. It's not offered through the broker. I don't know why, but the sites I visited all make a point of saying they cannot offer travel protection and they cannot offer any advice on travel protection. When you book a typical vacation package, Disney or your travel agent, and you know you should book through a travel agent, right? will take the time to review the travel protection policy with you and you can purchase it directly from Disney. Do you really say 50% off as some websites say? Well, yes and no. I visited multiple DVC rental websites and compared them to Disney's current prices. In some cases, there were significant discounts, even greater than 50%, but most of the time the savings were in that 25 to 35% range. In some cases, there was hardly any savings at all, like this one. I entered October 21st through October 24th, three nights, for a one-bedroom standard view villa at Disney's Saratoga Springs Resort. The average rental price for points was $1,800 for the stay. Booking directly with Disney using the fall room discount of 35% off, the nightly rate was $1,849. So why would anyone rent points with all these negatives and uncertainties? Well, there is one group of people in particular where renting points makes perfect sense other Disney Vacation Club members. See, DVC members have a home resort, which simply means they get a head start on booking their vacation at one particular resort over everyone else, an 11 month head start. For example, my home resort is Boulder Ridge at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. I can book my vacation there 11 months out while others have to wait. This gives me the best chance of availability. Now, if I want to book a different resort, let's say Bay Lake Tower at Disney's Contemporary Resort, I have to wait seven months to book it because it's not my home resort. Availability will be limited seven months out, so there's a good chance I won't be able to book the room I want there. Unless I rent points from someone whose home resort is Bay Lake Tower, I could rent their points 11 months out for the best availability and then rent my own points out to someone else. Hopefully I'll break even, but in most cases there will be some loss, especially if I use a broker who will take a commission for their work. Renting points is a tricky business and you really have to do your homework. Weigh out the pros and cons of renting, considering cancellation policies and if the savings is worth it. If you're a first time visitor, I don't think you should attempt this. You really should know the ins and outs of Disney World and the vacation planning process before you go rogue and end up making it even more complicated. I have a video that explains traditional Disney World vacation packages where I discuss how it works and point out some money saving tips. You can check that video out coming up right here.